Hello and welcome to Reykjavik Grapevine's newscast. My name is Mole Grattison and I'm an editor in chief at Reykjavik Grapevine. With me is the, is the star of the show, of course, Polly, the chief of morale officer, uh, fetching my frisbee, of course. We have the keeper occupied up to a point. Okay. Uh, we're here in Hafnafjörður in Hellisgerði. Uh, this is like a Christmas village, so it's part of the Christmas uh, decorations in this town. Uh, Hafnafjörður is, of course, in my opinion, the most beautiful town in the world. Uh, it's also my hometown, and this garden is actually the garden I more or less spent uh, all of my childhood in. Uh, I, I'm very fond of this garden. I try to come here as often as I can. So why not use the opportunity and bring you with me as well as a picnic and our dear Polly. So, uh, before we start, uh, there are a few things I need to tell you about. First of all, uh, our uh, uh, tours. Uh, we still have, of course, uh, our, uh, our walking tours, me and Bjartmar and Polly, of course. Uh, Bjartmar, you know him. He's, of course, an investigative journalist and he's an absolutely badass in what he does. Uh, and he helps me. We have been friends for a long time. And he helps me with, uh, with, uh, with the tours. Uh, where we go over everything and nothing and, and explain a little bit uh, what makes an Icelander an Icelander. You can find this uh, on our homepage, grapevine.is. It's under tours. Uh, and also, uh, there are a lot of other... Uh, actually, if you, if you have no interest in whatever we have to say, uh, we have a, a variety of uh, other uh, trips or tours that you can take. Everything from just going to the Golden Circle to uh, to the to at Dalir, uh, to the the volcano in Fagradarsfjall, uh, which is not erupting, uh, sadly, well, sadly and, and not so sadly anymore. Uh, and uh, so, like, you can do whatever. Just go there, check it out, and trust me, you'll find something. Also, uh, Glenn Franz from Arizona, uh, you have actually won in the, our newsletters quiz. Uh, we had 350 right answers, uh, and the question was basically, which one of these is not one of the legendary Icelandic Jule lads? And I love this question because Helgi, he's in our marketing department, and he's very funny, very inventive, uh, and he is always uh, messing this up in some ways. Uh, and he actually asked, uh, which one of these uh, Jule lads are not the real Jule lad? And first he said Bjugna Kraikir, or the sausage stealer, or was it Frithjóur, the peace thief, Skirgámur, the skir gobbler, or Stúur, Stubby? Uh, the right answer is, of course, Frithjóur, or peace thief. But the funny thing is, uh, this is a very, uh, actually, a, a common name in Iceland. Uh, and it has an absolutely hilarious meaning, which is basically robbing your peace, <laughs> or however you would put that in English. But uh, these uh, newsletter quiz, we, we have it every, every uh, other week, I think. Uh, and uh, just uh, if you want to be a part of that, you can, of course, describe, uh, subscribe to that uh, down below. Uh, and uh, next time we will have a fresh question for you. Uh, if not next time, then the, the show afterwards. But uh, on to the news, right? The first news, perhaps, uh, just a follow-up from our last newscast, which uh, was about the plastic that Bjartmar, or Stundin, uh, investigative journalist, uh, magazine in Iceland, they found in, uh, in Sweden. Uh, they found, uh, they think it's up to 1,500 tons of Icelandic plastic. All of this was, of course, import, uh, exported in 2016, we think. Uh, and uh, it's still lying around like nothing. Uh, and and uh, like on top of everything, uh, it's now like uh, on the responsibility of a Palestinian refugees in Sweden to basically uh, uh, pay for it uh, to get burnt. Uh, although, of course, both uh, consumers as well as uh, companies, we have already paid for this. We were basically betrayed. Uh, and uh, this is a little bit muddy. It's, there is a question about like who is responsible for this. Is it the recycle fund? Uh, is it the government? Uh, and so on. But uh, this is still in development. What we know right now is that Gudlu Thor Thordarsson, he is our, uh, he's a new minister of, of, of environment in Iceland. Uh, and he has said that this is, of course, an outrageous 
and he is uh, quite mad about this. He does not want to be in an interview in the future about this. Uh, he sat in an interview at the roof, uh, and he's also is going to, uh, through the Re Icelandic Re Re Recycle Fund, he will demand that the Swedish company Sverek, which they were doing business with, uh, get this Icelandic plastic and get it into the right process. Uh, this has not happened yet, uh, but we will see if there is anything that, uh, if they're really going to like uh, do what they promise. Uh, it doesn't always, ha always ha happen, but uh, sometimes it does. Yeah, you can see this is actually a new uh, fountain here. It's, it used to be an uh, older one, but exactly like this. And this uh, like pond here used to be different. But when I, when I was a kid, I, we were always like in, in April, uh, May, we, were, we went into the, this and we were like, uh, what do you call it? Like uh, not swimming, but like wa waiting, right? Wait, I don't know. No idea how the word is. Anyways, uh, a beautiful place here. And you can see even like there's a reindeer here. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Check it out, Art. This is something new that uh, the town of Hapnafjörður has been doing. Uh, I absolutely love this. Uh, many people that actually watch this newscast uh, stay often in Hapnafjörður. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, only like uh, 15 minutes from Reykjavik. So it's just to, uh, that doesn't take much time to drive between places. Uh, and of course, it's a wonderful place to grow up in. Uh, to all the news, uh, Iceland is in a state of emergency because of this log 4 j problem. Uh, within Icelandic co computer systems, as well as many computer systems around the world. Uh, this was discovered in Alibaba, uh, the, like Amazon, just in China. Uh, and the thing is, uh, this was also discovered, this like, uh, this, uh, it's not a virus, it's like a opening into the system for hackers or whoever want to do something bad. Uh, and. Uh, <coughs> And this was also discovered in the game Minecraft. Uh, we all know Minecraft, especially if you have kids. Minecraft is, of course, a very, very popular game. Uh, and it has this uh, flaw that, uh, yeah, uh, is, is dangerous, obviously. Uh, the government is taking this very seriously, as well as, like, the Icelandic uh, cyber uh, uh, department of uh, Icelandic government. Uh, and they are now working on, uh, like, patching this up. But it's going slowly, it seems. Uh, well, around 100 attacks were actually, uh, like there was a 100 attempts to attack these systems uh, every minute uh, in Iceland, uh, like yesterday at least and the day before probably. And just for me telling you this, it probably will be a little bit more because there are like a lot of hackers, a lot of people that would do a lot of harm. Uh, thankfully, the banks are not within this. Uh, like the banks, they have stated uh, themselves that they are not uh, uh, in any jeopardy, uh, as well as the homes, like us, the public. We don't really have to worry about this, but it's the systems within the companies, institutions and so on, and you have to update all of this, and I'm guessing this is a whole lot of process. So it's, 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 uh, this was discovered on Thursday last week, uh, and it's still uh, still ongoing, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> also, the most complicated polemics is happening right now. <laughs> uh, I I'm only telling you this story because I thought it was hilariously funny myself. Uh, perhaps you will not know any of these uh, players, but it's, 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 it's hilarious nonetheless. Uh, the thing is that uh, we have a very famous Icelandic writer, incredibly good writer also. His name is Bergset Birgisson. He's also a doctor in, like, in, uh, what do you call it, medieval, uh, like in the Viking era and so on. And he's, he's a teacher uh, in Norway, uh, a prof professor. Uh, he is, like I said, also a brilliant novelist. Uh, I've, I've written very nice books. Uh, one of them is, uh, I don't even know how they, they sing in English, but it's, it's in Icelandic. It's a svar við brevi frá Helgu, if that tells you anything. But it's one of my absolute favorite books. Uh, and the thing is, uh, he wrote this book, uh, The Look for the Black Viking. Um, this is a book about uh, Geirmund Heljarskin. And this is a very old Viking from like North 
northwest of Iceland in Strandir. It's a very remote place, the most remote place probably in Iceland still today. Uh, and this Viking was living there. And of course, Bergson is from this area himself. Uh, and the thing is that he wrote this article, they wrote this uh, book, and it's like a combination of like like uh, not being a novel as well as just uh, like rock solid uh, hi hi history book. Uh, but the thing is, uh, he had like a, he was like he he says that he has had this theory in this book that the, the settlers came to Iceland uh, in the beginning uh, in many ways because there was a lot of walrus in Iceland and they did so because uh, they wanted to hunt them because they could use a lot of it uh, of like the, the skin the 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 lisi within them uh, what is it we like lisi anyways and then. Uh, uh, and so on. And these stations, like hunting stations, became like some foundation of, for, for some towns. Uh, this is actually like a theory, uh, before I go there perhaps, the thing is there is the directory of Central Bank. He is also like a history buff. Uh, and he wrote this book, uh, Ingolver's uh, Island. And uh, it means basically this is the island of Ingolver Arnason, the first uh, settler in Iceland, although he wasn't really. Uh, he was one of like the first chieftain that came here, but he was not really the first guy that ever came here. But that really matter. The thing is, of course, that he says in the same book, and he, he basically focuses on like the economical thing of the settlers. It's, it's interesting uh, concept in a way. But the thing is that he was, uh, he said in the book that the, uh, many of the, these Vikings were coming here to Iceland uh, to hunt the walrus, and he was talking about the economy, economy around it. Uh, I haven't read the book itself. I read the other one though, and it was br brilliant. <laughs> Not the most easy reading of, of all time, but if you, if you get it in, in English, then definitely read it. Uh, but the thing is, of course, that uh, Bergset says that he stole this theory about the walrus without, uh, because he didn't uh, recite uh, Bergset in any way. And therefore, he stepped out, uh, wrote this article, and attacked the, the directory of Central Bank very harshly, I have to say. Uh, this is like a very hard debate between them. The director says, uh, first of all, uh, he is no scientist when it comes to history. He says that uh, he thought that this theory was more or less just something that everyone knew and were, have, had accepted. But it uh, turns out it's far from that, actually. Uh, this is something that has been circulating uh, within the, the, like in the universities in, in Iceland since 2000. But uh, the theory hasn't been discussed in, uh, it seems, in, in a more serious way. But Bergsvet tries to do it in a, in a serious way in his book. And the thing is, of course, they are now uh, basically debating, like, is this, uh, did he steal this or not? Bergsvet uh, says he still stole it. Uh, the directory of the bank, uh, Ausgeir, he says he did not. And therefore, Bergsvet has actually uh, complained to the ethical committee uh, or like a science ethical committee uh, within the University of Iceland, where this uh, case is right now. Uh, we haven't seen many cases go, go there, not this publicly, uh, but it, was, it will it'd be interesting to see how all of this will go. Uh, but to add to it, uh, uh, there are a new character after a new character coming into the news and saying, first character said that, uh, Bergsvet was no better himself, that he actually stole a lot of things when he wrote this book, uh, Svar við bréfi til Helgu, like a, my, one of my favorite books. Uh, and of course, uh, Bergsvet says that's utter nonsense. Uh, and then there was a journalist, actually, an uh, old editor-in-chief, which I worked for uh, like uh, years ago. Uh, but he's also uh, like a very famous history buff in Iceland. Uh, he said, like, well, I scooped this in 2007 because it was on the, the cover of a very little known magazine called Our History. It was like, a, it was a nice magazine actually at the time. I remember it myself, but only because I'm a journalist and I read everything at the time. Uh, but the thing is that uh, it was correct what uh, Italy said. It's like, this is something that, uh, like, this is not a new theory. This is not perhaps. Uh, completely uh, Bergsvet's theory and so on. But in the end, these are just middle-aged men really going off about walrus. 
Uh, and it's, uh, Icelanders are quite taken by this, mostly because of the humor. Uh, both we like polemics, of course. Icelanders absolutely love that. But we also like uh, feel like it's, uh, this is something that is so obscure and odd that we are uh, reading this like, uh, like with, with enthusiasm and are basically waiting for someone to steal that story <laughs> and make, make a, a novel out of it. But enough of that. Uh, I don't know if you understand this joke, but it, we absolutely love this. Uh, also, and we don't drink as much. That's perhaps the reason we are reading this news <laughs> so much. Uh, we have every year, <clears throat> Uh, we have this Christmas beer, like uh, the most salty Christmas beer in Iceland is this Christmas tu uh, uh, Tupork, uh, da the Danish beer. Uh, and the thing is, and the thing is that uh, the Christmas Tupork is, uh, we, we actually drank 23% uh, less uh, of this beer last year, uh, this year, but last year we drank 785,000 liters uh, of the Christmas beer, but this year is only 605 liters. Uh, we don't know exactly why this is changing. COVID last year was very like, booze heavy, if you want. We drank a lot. We bought, they were all records, they were like breaking drinking records every day almost, uh, mostly because of COVID and the bars were closed, of course. Uh, and it was interesting to see this, but uh, so it goes. Uh, so we're drinking less, that's fine. Uh, and finally, uh, Dora Olafsdóttir. She broke an Icelandic record yesterday when she became the oldest Icelander uh, that have ever lived in Iceland, as, well as we know of. She became 109 and 160 days old yesterday. Uh, the, the previous record was 100, uh, 109 years old and 159 days. Uh, this woman is, uh, is absolutely brilliant. Uh, she was all, all over the news yesterday with interviews and she was uh, telling that the, 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 the magic or the trick behind uh, long, living so long is more or less don't drink <laughs> uh, and don't smoke. Uh, also, uh, she, uh, she said uh, that she loves to read. She can actually still read, which is, which is pretty amazing for a 109 years old woman. And she was very clear in her mind and she was very fun in these interviews. Uh, but she actually said in the end of one of the interviews, well, I think it's actually like I had enough. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to, to head for the long journey, she said, <laughs> so, which is a, kind of a grim, bittersweet, but interesting to see that view. So. Old people, a little less alcohol, uh, and uh, professors in polemics. Uh, everything is happening in Iceland, as you can hear. Uh, of course, we have COVID still. It is more or less the same as, as before and before. Not much has changed last month. Uh, we're still having around 130 cases. Not much to say about it. But, and also, we had one more death, uh, which is, uh, it was a shock, but it's, uh, uh, it was expected in some ways. Uh, and yeah, uh, thanks for watching, of course. Uh, please remember, of course, uh, our tours. Check them out if you're coming to Iceland, especially now, uh, like in December. Uh, we will have tours between Christmas and, and New Year. And it's, it's, we can go over the, like, the, the fireworks. The fireworks are absolutely wonderful. And there will be, probably be a lot of fireworks while we're doing this, because Icelanders love, love to uh, shoot up. What are you you can't get up here. Can you? Is he going to find the way? Are you a genius or not, Polly? I think she's not getting it. Uh, and of course, remember our newsletter. Uh, sign up if you want to be in the quiz. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, will we meet on Thursday? Uh, until then, uh, yeah, be happy and, and good luck. Could you? Yeah? Yeah! <laughs> Could you? Hey! <laughs> so close, Polly! <laughs>